Hi everybody, it is the 21st of February, it's about 1.20 p.m. and um, welcome back to my channel. Um, my name is Kirthi and I'm currently a NUS student and I thought I would kind of um, make a video to go through the application um, form for this year and also like um, give you guys tips and tricks that managed to get me offers from all three major universities in Singapore last year. So for context, I'm a year one student right now. I'm in my second semester and I'm currently at home. I do stay on campus. I'm part of NUS College, which I will kind of talk about later on in um, the video. But um, I am at home right now and I'm not um, in my dorm room uh, because it is recess week. We have midterms next week, so we have a week off to study for midterms. Um, and I thought I would just kind of go through the application format. So the first part is essentially filling in like your personal details. So things like you, um, um, your name, gender, date of birth, citizenship. So this is obviously things that make sure uh, double, triple, like quadruple check your information. Tip one, because a lot of the times your point of contact, especially your email and your addresses need to be accurate so they can send you stuff. Because if you're in and you, you have the wrong email, they won't be able to reach you. So always, always make sure that you are giving them accurate information and your alternative email, my recommendation is to actually not give an alternative email that belongs to you, but an alternative email that belongs to another person who also regularly checks their mail. So be it your siblings, your mom, your dad, whoever. Um, and for your alternative contact, um, give like um, whosoever contact you believe will be on their phone a lot, just in case they can't reach you, then they will be kind of um, able to contact someone who is contactable and not some random person who like never checks their phone or whose phone is always on do not disturb. So the second part of the application is essentially choice of study and for a choice of study um, this is where you kind of pick your degree. So my advice for picking your degree, although it's a most people kind of apply to universities with like um, kind of an idea of what they want to do, my advice is to always be open and to always check um, the actual faculty requirements to make sure that um, you've kind of fulfilled all the requirements and that you're eligible because you're essentially like kind of wasting a choice if you're not eligible for that. For example, um, there's certain courses where you need like a pass in mathematics or you should have taken mathematics and if you don't have that, then it's going to become an issue and you can't take that course and stuff like that. So always, always, always check back with the actual faculty requirements um, as well as their indicative grade profile. If you are applying as an A-level Singaporean or a polytechnic student, they always have information about their GPA um, as well as your indicative grade profile, which is essentially like the number of H2 uh, grades that you need and the H1 grade. Um, so yeah, do not ever take this decision lightheartedly, uh, making your choice of study, but also um, don't stress yourself out because in NUS you do have the option until your fifth semester to change your major. Obviously, depending on how you are doing as a student and what course you want to go to or you want to switch into. So do not feel as if like this decision is going to be your final, final decision, but always do your due diligence to make sure that you can get into the course that you want to get into. Um, and then the next uh, the next section is um, education. So this is where you will fill in information about your previous educational qualifications. So if you're from Singapore, that would be your secondary education, as well as either your ITE um, pre-university, which is um, either JC or poly. Um, so um, make sure all your grades are in there, all the relevant grades that they ask for are in there, and also make sure that the year that you take um, these examinations in are accurate because they will ask you for your certificates and they will match um, match what you submit um, to those, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so next is the achievement section. And this is actually the section that I kind of wanted to talk about and I feel like I'll be able to give you guys solid advice for. Um, so this is actually something that a lot of my friends found quite difficult like applying um, this year and it's essentially like 
questions, like short answer questions, where there are questions like, tell us something you've done outside your school curriculum to prepare yourself for your chosen degree program. Um, tell us about a time when you failed to do something. Tell us about something that is meaningful to you. And like for all these short answer questions, right? Tip number one is to always, always try to pack as much as possible and convey it in such a concise manner that the reader can understand exactly what you're trying to say in the 550 characters because you have like about maximum maybe a hundred words, a hundred to like a hundred and ten words um, on average to convey something that is going to make your admissions officer be like, okay, I want them in my school. And so it is important for you to think about I mean, the things that you may have done could have been normal, like it could have been like an internship, but the way you talk about it is so important. So instead of just saying that, oh, I did an internship and I learned this, 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 like I learned like these technical skills, and one um, tip would actually be to connect it to like values that you learned. So instead of just being like, oh, you know, I learned how to like, I, I learned how to manage calendars or for some, or, or, or I learned how to schedule events. You can talk about the fact that you learned how to manage your time properly and that you learned like accountability and responsibility because you were kind of, um, scheduling events for other people's calendars and things like that. So even if you did something like as simple as like, um, selling stuff or working part-time in like some sort of retail store you the way you talk about it is very important like you can talk about how it was a front-facing customer job where you were able to understand customers um queries and answer them and try to help them to your best of, to the best of your ability and i think another thing is always be honest um sometimes admissions officers can actually ask you questions um during your interviews depending on what you kind of put in in this um section um they might and i feel like you always have to be prepared so don't like lie just for the sake of lying like i understand kind of like embellishing your experience but uh, don't overdo it because most of the times admission officers can tell whether you're lying or not. Um, and I think also like simple is always best. Um, for example, there's a question that says, tell us about something that is meaningful to you and why. And um, my friend wrote about the fact of, like giving back to society and stuff like that, which is inherently a very simple idea and it's a very simple notion, but I guess um, in the grander sense of things, it's something that stands out to admissions officers because something that is so simple is so many meaningful to this person, which kind of um, gives you an insight into, uh, gives admissions officers um, an insight into who you are as a person and things like that. Yeah. And um, there is another section um, where, which is quite important, where they say, is there anything else about yourself which you want us to know? This is where you talk about everything you didn't include previously in your application. Something like being featured in an article or getting like certain CCA points or other CCAs where you weren't able to talk about them. This is where you put it in. Um, very, very important to not leave this section blank. So if you have achievements, put them in here. Um, and then there's also like the different activities and the achievement levels um, and other stuff like that. And then there's the other information, um, which is quite straightforward, like health declarations, financial aid, stuff like that. And so this is, um, after this, you will essentially get like, a, there will be a small thing at the bottom of your screen, which says, um, I want to be considered for NUS college. And then you have to take yes or no. NUS college is not NUS. That is um, a very big thing. NUS college was officially launched yesterday on the 20th of February, but it's already taken in its first batch. I am part of the first batch. Um, it's taken in and NUS college is not NUS. So NUS college is NUS's first interdisciplinary college Inter first honors college that is interdisciplinary. So on top of my own faculty modules that I will be studying at the School of Business because I'm a business major, I will also be taking modules specific to NUS college that only NUS college students can take. So I will be taking modules such as um, Socio like our sociology module, which is about understanding Singapore um, in the context of the larger world, or NGN, which is global narratives, which is kind of like a literature module. So um, I'll be taking these modules in extremely small class sizes and getting to know other NUS college students. So NUS college is not NUS, so do not check NUS college unless you want to be considered for NUS college, which is a completely separate academic program. Yes, there are similarities between what you will be doing in NUS and NUS college, but 
at the end of the day, there's also a very, very, very big difference. Um, more information on NUS College, you guys can um, leave any questions down below, or I will also be leaving links to NUS College's website, as well as um, the admissions page, so you guys can um, just access it very quickly in the description box below. So, um, when you tick yes, I want to be considered for NUS College, um, it is essentially like they'll ask you to reflect on your co-curricular and non-academic activities. So NUS College's admissions process is quite holistic. So they want you, they want you to have done something that is like more than just study in your previous educational career. So in that sense, this is where you kind of talk about like what you learned from CCA, all the CCAs you were part of, everything that was non-academic, like internships. Um, Internships not necessarily they don't have to necessarily be academic depending on what you did So just make sure that you can explain it properly um, CCAs competitions whether you've represented Singapore in something that is non-academic like not non-academic per se non-academic to the things you were studying for example, I was an arts kid in um, JC um, in junior college but I also had this thing where I went for like a design and technology event. So that is something that I included because it was non-academic to me. I did not study um, chemistry or physics, but I still went for this. So things like that. Yeah. And um, I think they also have a lot of like hundred words or fewer like short answer questions. For example, you presumably learned your values from someone or through some process or experience. Tell us about one value that came about in a way. Again, advice for this, make sure that you can communicate what you want to convey in 100 words or less make sure it is clear and succinct you don't have to use fancy words in in fact i was talking to a lot of the admissions officers and you really don't have to use like extremely extremely fancy words um like admissions officers necessarily don't get impressed by those they get more impressed by you being able to accurately convey your idea because essentially what they're checking for is whether you'd be a good fit for their school because they kind of like understand what culture is like and also don't be afraid of having like polarizing views or being honest about your opinions like even if it's against the social norm i feel like if you're able to convey um what you're saying and defend what you're trying to say in a matter that is respectful and still understanding that people have different views and opinions and that this is just yours and that it's only one opinion of the many that people tend to have about a particular opinion or topic then sorry a particular topic then you're doing a good job and so you shouldn't be like you shouldn't like want necessarily have to be like oh i have to write this specific thing because i think that this is like widely accepted by society even if your personal opinion is not something that matches with what you're writing so um i think another thing that's also like another question is for example like how do other people function for you what roles do others play for you and your sense of self so Things like these, these are like oddly very, very personal questions and at first like it can make you very uncomfortable and it's very difficult to talk about it in a hundred words because you're like, you want to be like, for example, for me, my biggest um, stressor when I was writing like hundred words or fewer questions was like, no, what about, what about this scenario that I'm not like accounting for? What about this scenario? But it's a very generic answer, like please do not overthink and completely like just ruin your excitement for applying. Um, please know that this is your application, this is personal to you, and if you have a certain answer, that answer is correct for you. And whether or not it gets you into this school is dependent on the admissions officers and not how right your answer is. So um, still, the idea is to, because see, when you get into this school, your admissions officers essentially are looking at your portfolio and you as a person, depending on the answers you give. So if they accept you into this school, depending based on this answer that you give, that is not necessarily a true reflection of you, there's this idea that perhaps you as a person wouldn't be a good fit for the school, but your answer would. So you have to make sure that your personality is what shines through these answers to make sure that at least like from their perspective as well, they're taking in someone that fits their school and you as well like you would enjoy being part of their school yeah um and then there's also the 600 500 word question um and you can pick um from three options and then you can kind of answer um three or four options and then you can kind of answer i believe my question was about the idea of having um 
like a personal brand or like a motto and like the difference between those and whether I think having one is important and I said that you know I don't think um, I talked about the difference between a motto and a personal like a like a brand or a personal image because I said that you know one is more outward one is more outward facing and one is more inward I personally don't think having a personal brand is extremely important because I do not give a lot of weight to what other people outside of my circle outside of people that I choose to have in my life think of me so in that sense um, that was what that was how I justified things like that so I had friends who were a bit shocked because they were like how can you say that this is not important the thing was like that was just my opinion and i think that's also like um my advice to you um so be honest don't think don't overthink so hard don't overthink every every word you're writing so hard yeah um and then the other thing is documents very 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 important to have your documents in check a lot of the things that you write would be so much more weight there would be so much more weight added on to those things if your documents are in order so if you have actual certificates if you have actual um things able to kind of um justify and support the claims that you're making so in that sense very important to have those make sure they're clearly scanned everything is legible um you can use you don't need like a printer or like a fancy scanner for that you can use your phone there's a million apps out there um i personally use um genius scan and microsoft lens those are very good for um kind of scanning your stuff right into pdfs and then you can just upload it make sure to label it clearly and correctly so that they know what they are checking for so another feature of NUS College is um, interviews. I'll be doing a separate videos on. I'll be doing a separate video on interview tips and tricks, um, and general interviewing stuff for NUS. Um, so do look out for that. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, please do let me know. And um, you can also reach me on Instagram, um, links down below. And um, I'm wishing you guys all the best for your applications.